Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time we have Iran Tamir, who is our OpenShift's Container Storage Product Manager, and he's going to talk about a topic that's new to me, though I'm very interested in this one, the multi-cloud object gateway. So I'll let Iran um, introduce himself. There's live Q&A at the end. And as always, this will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel uh, for our OpenShift and along with the slides. So Iran, take it away. Thank you, Dan. Um, and today, as Dan said, uh, we will talk as part of the OpenShift Con briefing, we will talk about the multi-cloud object gateway, uh, which is part of a product called uh, OpenShift Container Storage. Um, so let's start. Um, let's start with what is uh, OpenShift Container Storage, actually. Um, so the OpenShift Container Storage is a, a, a component, it's a product uh, available as part of the operator uh, hub, uh, available on every OpenShift 4.2 and higher. Um, and what we try to do with uh, this product is to create a very uh, highly scalable and uh, production grade persistent storage uh, that is uh, really optimized to run with OpenShift, uh, targeting stateful application. Um, we try to create a very integrated uh, user experience, which means that everything uh, starting from the installation and ending uh, and going through the installation uh, process itself and the monitoring day two operations, everything is integrated within the OpenShift console. Um, so you can learn uh, uh, very easily what to do. You can very easily um, make sure that you have everything in place uh, to run uh, your applications um, and uh, use this uh, uh, storage. Uh, and of course, from uh, a commercial point of view, it's very easy to uh, uh, work with the one vendor. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the uh, that's in a high level. Uh, if I may say, what is the main thing for me? Uh, I'm say I, I would say that uh, becoming a diagnostic layer for the storage is the most important part. Because if I'm looking at OpenShift as a platform, the fact that it's agnostic, you can run it anywhere. You can have it the same experience on prem and in the cloud. Uh, OpenShift Container Storage is the layer for storage that would now allow it for the data uh, and for the stateful applications. Uh, so what do we have in the object, uh, uh, in the OpenShift uh, Container Storage? Um, we have three services. We have the block, we have the file, and we have the object. And today we'll actually focus on the object uh, uh, story. Uh, but just to give you the full picture, uh, that's how it looks like. So wherever you are working uh, with uh, uh, OpenShift, uh, OpenShift Container Storage will be there for you and provide these uh, uh, three services by default. No need to configure anything, simply deploy OpenShift Container Storage and you'll get these three services and, uh, and, and uh, get all the value that I mentioned before. Now we'll drill down to the multi-cloud object gateway which is one of the components. The idea there is that uh, you can start lean uh, in a very lightweight way, um, which means that uh, once you deploy the services up and running, uh, you can start using it. It's very easy to get the endpoint the access key and secret key and have a service which, is, which behaves like a Amazon S3 uh, a compatible storage, but it's running in your OpenShift, it's running locally. Uh, and whenever you move your application, so if you are using the dev environment and then you're moving to test, staging, and production, it will behave exactly the same way. Um, and, and from the application point of view, you don't need to change any code. And I will explain what I mean uh, soon. Uh, the second phase would be scale. How can I scale? Uh, and we, you can easily scale internally by using local volumes. You can scale by uh, uh, using a, a internal storage in your data center if, if you're running in the data center. Uh, uh, and of course, you can use the uh, native cloud storage uh, for hybrid and multi-cloud uh, uh, scenarios. 
Um, so let's start to talk about what is it, what, what are the attributes, what are the characteristics that we have for the uh, multi-cloud object uh, uh, gateway. Um, so first, it's important to understand that it's mainly a data management. I mean, we do provide an S3 API, and that's the interface for the applications, and I will explain it in the in the next slide. Uh, but by that, we actually uh, 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 embed uh, many functionalities. Uh, and for example, uh, every uh, every data that is written to uh, to this component will actually have it compressed. We ha will have an inland, an inland duplication. And everything is secured in, in transit and uh, at rest, uh, which means that um, whenever you're writing data, we actually have our own format in the backend. And we always have a backend. We always have something we call backing store. Uh, and by default, whenever you're running on-prem, by default, it's on a, a component, uh, internal component, the RGW, if, if you know it. If you're running in the cloud, it's the cloud native storage. Um, so it's always a very uh, a nimble storage underneath, uh, but you will always get all these benefits by using the OCS uh, uh, API uh, here. Um, on top of that, we have data management, meaning that you don't need to take hard decisions before you uh, start running. You can simply start using uh, uh, OCS and start using the multi-cloud object gateway and then take a decision of uh, like, uh, okay, where do I actually want the data? Do I want it on-prem? Do I want it on-prem and mirror to the cloud? Uh, and so on. And I can take this decision. Uh, I can take various decisions along the time. Um, and I will show you in a second. Uh, important to say, and, and that's the logo that you see here, uh, the entire multi-cloud object gateway uh, component is based on Nube technology. Uh, personally, I'm coming from uh, from that startup acquired by Reddit uh, about a year ago, um, and that's the uh, that's this logo that you see currently in the slide, um, and that's how it looks like. So, if you're looking at OpenShift and we have OpenShift container storage installed, uh, we have Nuba, we have the multi-cloud object gateway uh, provided by default, and uh, and that's how it looks like. So on the left side, we have the applications. The applications uh, are um, are any application that can currently use AWS S3. Uh, it can be a custom application. It can be existing application. Any any vendor that has an application like backup application, and so on. Uh, they usually have uh, S3 API integration, so you can use that as well. So these are the application. They always use this S3 API provided by the multi-cloud object gateway. On the right side, we have all the flexibility uh, hidden underneath. So uh, as I mentioned before, by default, you can immediately start working. You don't need any configuration, but when you want to start uh, um, uh, progressing and scale and uh, start thinking about the DevOps and and uh, how do you uh, how are you going to deploy it for customers in productions uh, you can start playing with uh, this flexibility uh, as I, as I mentioned before uh, you can use uh, local resources uh, on-prem you can use the uh, the local PVs that we also provide as part of OCS you can use cloud native storage regardless if, if you're running on-prem or in the cloud, uh, it will always be available for you. Um, and you can have a combination of any mixture, you know, of this uh, uh, native cloud uh, buckets or local uh, storage uh, to create hybrid buckets. And you can take this decision for every bucket of data. So one bucket can work locally, another bucket can work uh, uh, in the cloud or have multiple mirrors in the cloud. Uh, uh, we support it all. When we are talking about even more advanced uh, uh, configuration that uh, uh, will be uh, part of the uh, near future uh, in OpenShift itself, uh, it opens many additional uh, 
opportunities uh, to work, to have locality, for example. So we can have multi-cloud object gateway in each one of the environments, and we can uh, replicate data between these uh, uh, clusters. So customers or applications that are running on the upper cluster uh, uh, can use the data and have it locally, uh, which might be important for performance, for example, um, but also whatever it's written here, it will be replicated to the cluster on the bottom uh, and so on. So it actually expands more and brings to the, to the table uh, more opportunities. Um, I didn't mention uh, the UI, uh, sorry, I, I did mention the, the user experience before, uh, and also for this component, we have uh, um, its own uh, uh, UI. Uh, as you can see, it's very uh, easy, it's very clean. Um, and one of the things that we are currently doing is to bring most of the value directly to the OpenShift dashboard, so you don't even need to go to this area uh, uh, by default. We are bringing all this information uh, uh, directly to the OpenShift dashboard, and it's already part of uh, our uh, versions that are running uh, uh, currently in, under OpenShift itself. Now I would like to uh, have a little uh, uh, deep dive, it's not that deep, no worries, uh, but it's important to explain a bit how it's working um, to understand that we actually brings also um, uh, many solutions for security issues, for example, uh, and questions that usually uh, um, start popping up, popping up when you're talking with customers um, about uh, cloud usage, for example. So whenever uh, an application is writing data to the multi-cloud object gateway, uh, we have fragmentation. So we, we chunk every uh, data to multiple chunks. We have the deduplication. Uh, so if something is already written, if, if it's part of a, a movie, if it's part of a, a text file, if it's part of a, um, a presentation, if it's a picture that we already saved, uh, uh, we will eliminate it, we will not go on and, and write the data. Uh, we have the compression and we have the encryption. So whenever we are writing data, we can actually decide that we are storing the data uh, in one or multiple locations, um, and then the, the result would be that uh, all the metadata is, uh, we keep all the metadata uh, inside the multi-cloud object gateway together with the keys and the data itself is encrypted in small chunks uh, and it's either on-prem or in the cloud but it's always the same always encrypted always small chunks uh, for part of the customers this separation between the key and the data is very important um, and also the fact that uh, uh, they can control the keys, and even if someone breaks into their uh, cloud accounts, uh, the data is not really usable. I would like to mention uh, additional uh, uh, security features, again, because this is uh, part of the first questions that we, we usually get um, about the encryption. So as I mentioned before, we have an encryption in REST and in motion. Uh, anonymization masking is something that we also have uh, for every bucket we have triggers um, so you the, the customers can build uh, their own processing uh, uh, flow so for example I want to create uh, I want to scan any every object that I'm writing to the bucket uh, and make sure that it does not include the social security number or uh, a credit card uh, information I can do it. I can trigger uh, a function that will uh, scan my uh, scan my object. Uh, let let's assume it's a log. It will scan the log, make sure that it does not include any uh, private uh, information, any privacy uh, concern. It will mitigate it uh, by that. 
and then it will be written to another bucket, for example, that is actually in the cloud, okay? That's just an example. Um, if we have gen genomics uh, uh, information, we can actually chunk it by a, a preset and decide that this part of the data will be written to a, a private uh, a location, another one will be replicated to the cloud. Um, uh, if there is a health record, we can take the uh, patient information, write it to the database, remove it from the health record, and then write it to the cloud, and so on. Uh, all this enabled by having functions and triggers as part of the uh, buckets in multi-cloud object gateway. Another mechanism that we have, and it's going to help us uh, when we will we'll introduce the warm uh, uh, support, is the fingerprinting. Uh, so we have a finger, fingerprint for every data that we keep, uh, and we keep uh, uh, tracking and, and checking it and make sure that uh, the data is always uh, intact. Uh, and if we discover that something is wrong, we quarantine it, we delete it, and we restore it from a, a, a trusted location, and everything um, is automatic, of course, and, uh, and the idea is to create a very a high trust uh, on with every storage that we are using underneath. Uh, last slide <coughs> before I'm moving to uh, 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 questions. Um, it's about uh, the technology. Uh, as I mentioned before, the multi-cloud object gateway is based on Nuba uh, uh, technology. Uh, it's now it's a, an open source project. Um, you can read about uh, the Nuba project in uh, in Nuba.io. Um, we have a GitHub repo for our core technology for our operator and, C and CLI and so on. So everything is available for your for you to to read and uh, interact. Um, and of course, to contribute code, if you like. And the enterprise version is part of uh, OpenShift container storage. We released it uh, uh, on January 2020. Um, we get a lot of good feedback uh, about uh, all the features that I mentioned. Um, so that's our current journey. Um, you can read more about object uh, uh, OpenShift uh, uh, container storage under openshift.com slash storage, and I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. All right. Well, thank you for that. And um, we do have a question from the audience. Um, Rav is asking, is there a suggested configuration by Red Hat to optimize the performance in an in OpenShift cluster? Is that true that OpenShift has the best performance on HW? That high availability, maybe clusters, or with the right configuration. Hardware? You're talking hardware. about hardware. Hard hardware. Okay, sorry, had my head okay. up the high availability okay. alley. Okay, so that's a, a very a timely question. Uh, we are going to release our bare metal version uh, next month, and we are currently testing it, so we will be able to uh, recommend. But in the general, in general, uh, uh, you don't need to have anything special. Uh, more than that, uh, one of the next in one of the next versions, uh, not in the one next month, but the one right after, expected uh, on May, uh, we will have auto scaling. So whenever you start, it starts uh, uh, as an entry level. But if there is load, if if there is an activity that requires more resources, uh, the auto scale will kick in and we'll uh, try to support it by simply creating more uh, endpoint uh, that will serve the data uh, transparently. So we do have, have all, the, all the mechanism, we do have uh, all the tools, I would say, to support uh, uh, performance, and I hope that we'll be able to, to provide the, the numbers as well uh, soon. So at the moment, I'm um, not seeing any other questions, which usually means our speaker has done a great job covering off most of the answers. Um, thank you, so thank you uh, Aaron. And um, again, if you are um, coming to KubeCon in Amsterdam, coming up in a few weeks, actually March 30th, we're gonna be hosting 
a container storage hands-on workshop at the OpenShift Commons gathering. Um, and I will sure. put a link to that in the chat. And um, if you'd like to, that's um, for the price of admission for the gathering, which I think is 49 euros. You can have an all day or a half day rather um, hands on workshop on container storage and learn a little bit more about this. So um, if you're looking for those details, um, I'll add them into the blog post, which will have this um, YouTube video embedded in it. And we will um, hopefully um, answer some more questions in person um, in the coming weeks. Again, um, openshift.com slash storage is sort of the landing page for all things storage um, that we're working on. And um, the Nuba page um, on GitHub has um, a lot of the information as well uh, around the multi-cloud gateway, object gateway stuff. Any last words, Aaron? No, thank you very much for having me. It was fun. And hopefully I will see you at at KubeCon. Me too. I'm looking forward to it. So take care, everybody, and um, join us again next week uh, for another couple of OpenShift Commons gatherings on lots of different topics. So you can always find it at um, commons.openshift.org slash events as the updated calendar. Thanks again. Thank you.